This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. the ramble and uh, we're here until midnight eastern standard time hey i finally got it right i didn't say eastern daylight time i said eastern standard time which is kind of good oh wait a minute hold on a second i'm trying to do something here uh, eastern standard time see because i've been saying eastern daylight time and i'm kind of i was mentioning last night i'm kind of like that clock you know that you have that's correct twice a year. No, well, no, you it, you go to daylight savings time and you don't change it. Right. So eventually it's correct. right again. Or it's on daylight savings time and you don't change it. Exactly. And eventually it's correct. Exactly. So, anyway, how are you, my dear? I uh, am so tired. What? But I'm going to st- stay here till exactly 1030. I'm not going to wait till somebody calls. Get closer to the microphone. I'm not going to wait till somebody calls. I'm so really, tired. Really? And also move your hat up a little bit no, so people can see your face. I don't face. want my face to be seen. Why don't you want your face to be I'm seen? I'm tired. Huh? I'm tired. Why, why are you? T- well, tell them why you're tired. I've I mean, been you cooking have, since you, Sunday. You have every right to be tired. And my back is killing me. Okay, what? My back. It's killing me. I know, your back is killing you. Oh, uh, actually, uh, that was an old, uh, an old thing, you know, in the Himalayas, when they would be cooking food and the food was burning, and uh, the woman would yell, "Oh, my baking yak!" <laughs> well, Yakety I got a la- yak. I got Don't a laugh out that. of her tonight That's before, true. B- before she suddenly decides that she's going to start dissing me and calling me all I kinds of things. I wouldn't do it, but I, I had. Thanksgiving dinner last night. Yes. And today we had leftover dinner. Yeah. So some friends came for leftovers. And then I took the carcass and made turkey soup. Yeah, but tell them, tell them what you had to do and that nobody ate, by the way. Nobody ate what? Well, she, she, didn't, she thought she would have enough turkey. <laughs> that she could invite people over the next for day. Leftovers. Huh? For, for, for le- leftovers. For leftovers. Yeah. And as it turned out... Everybody ate the turkey on Thursday night. Yeah, well, it was a 15-pound turkey. And maybe it was supposed should... to have been 20, but it came out to 15. If you had gotten 20, we would have had more than enough for today. Yeah. You know. Uh, but uh, uh, it was a very nice uh, dinner, and you're, you, know, you hold a great dinner party. Thank you. You know, it's like it's catered, like it's a catered affair. <laughs> I'm just so tired. However, <laughs> um, um, Natalia made a beet salad. It was delicious. That... It kind of tastes like potato salad, but it isn't. But, it's got but, potatoes in it. But potato salad with beets. Now, I'm not a big beet fan, but that was great. And yeah. she made some, something when we went over to their place, a soup, of something that normally I would not like. She sent me the recipe. It was, and it was delicious. It was very good. Those Russians know how to cook. <laughs> I mean, I don't know where they learned, since all they had to cook were like boots and uh, dead animals mm. for years. But, you know. Oh man, she's a good cook. Jack is a lucky man, you know. And I'm a terrible. I hope cook. in my old age I find somebody like Natalia. Here we go. <laughs> Here Fuck we you. Go. <laughs> you see, that's what I get. That's what I get, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, is, I make a whole dinner, and all he's doing is no, complimenting wait, wait, wait. my friends. I, that's, that's what I get. Items. Fuck you. She to her loving husband. She says, "Fuck you." She can't say, "Oh, come on, Alex." She can. Fuck you. Well, fuck me, fuck you. By the way, the rating, the numbers are very low tonight, and we're yelling at each other. Well, already. it's a holiday weekend. I told you I wanted to go to sleep. Yeah. Well, I'm but, depressed. But I will in 20 minutes. I'm depressed. Well, you're always depressed. So what's happening now? But what do you think I'm depressed about? Oh, who the fuck knows? What? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck knows? Who the is fuck it, knows? Is it your weight, the two ounces that you gain? Is it your ailments? We haven't had an update on your ailments. What is it? It's my weight. 
Uh, here we go. I'm at the highest I've been. Well, whose fault is that? What do you mean, whose fault is it? I mean, you eat bread every single no, day, no. and don't give me that crap that it's only no, th I three eat grams. This, no, I eat this low-carb bread. It looks like sponge. It looks like but sponge. It, but it has, it has 15 carbs in a whole loaf, and I don't eat a whole loaf every day. But when I want a little snack, I will do that because it kind of fills you up. But it's not, it's not full of carbs. I'm sorry. Let's not even... Let's not even go there. I don't want to talk about your fucking weight. I was up to 190 today. But then I went down to 189... I'm going to bed. ...and a half. Good night. <laughs> what? I'm going to bed. But Really? Well, I don't want to hear about your weight. It's nonstop. Boy, where are the people tonight? Where are you? It's a holiday. Yeah, it's a holiday. I said, let, 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 let me go to sleep. Well, anyway... So, um, uh, uh, listen, um, yes, that was a nice meal last night. Thank you. It was very you. nice. You did a nice job, and, and I even gave you a back rub afterwards. Yeah, my back is still killing me. Yeah. Was that a good back rub I gave? It was mediocre. It's only about 10 minutes. What do you mean it was mediocre? It's only 10 minutes. My fingers were giving out on me. Well, it's because you don't exercise. I don't exercise my fingers? How about this? There you okay? go. Okay, I'm exercising my finger, Okay. There you go, right there. Yeah. <laughs> how long do you figure? Let, how long do you figure this marriage is going to keep going? About three more hours. You know, I, I just put a thing up on Facebook, in which I one of the columns I wrote for Hustler was called "People Who Died," and it was about all the people in a particular year that I knew that had died. It was, it was uh, uh, Robert Schimmel, the comedian. There was Lynn Samuels, the talk show host, and then there was Steve Gruber. Oh, Steve was yeah. here too. And so I, the column was about them. And of course, uh, and then at the end, my editor, Bruce David, put in a thing that said, we're taking a pool on when Alex is going to die. <laughs> Which is really funny considering he then died. <laughs> and I lost my Another editor, friend. Hustler. You know, so... Well, I know when I'm going to die. Well, this is Bubbles thing. Bubbles one day said I if you go it. to a certain site, you I can put in it. all the stuff. I'm, and I'm, tell I'm you making what, plans now. They gave you the day, didn't they? They gave me the actual day, but I don't remember. But it's January 2023, which is the way I look at it, the way this country and the way this world is, is going, yeah. I don't want to be here. Anymore. We don't want you here either. Good. So yeah. to me, I can I, plan, I plan it to out. stick around long enough so I can be a, a, a burden to everybody. Won't be me because I'll check out before you. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, my, our friend Jack Garfine is what, 87? 87. And uh, uh, he's living a pretty good life. Yeah. You know, he's got a wonderful girlfriend. She adores him and he adores her. She absolutely adores him. You know, that's what I need from yeah, you. Well, no, sorry. I'm never going to get it. <laughs> sorry, kid. You know, everything is all my my baking yak. But you know, in my knee, I have a, I have an actual torn meniscus here, which at times causes me great pain, even more than you do. Here we go. Even with the more ailments. than you do. We're up to the ailments update. There's no ailment update. I have a men torn meniscus. I'm but, good. you know, they don't tell you to go get it operated on immediately. And I have a hernia, and they don't tell you to go have an operation for that immediately. What else do I have? That's about it. And my feet are numb all the time. Go figure. So, anyway. The so trouble is, the trouble is, I have a hard time sleeping, a full night's sleep, because if my leg goes the wrong way while I'm sleeping, uh, it then t hurts the meniscus. It works you up. Yeah, and you keep telling me wear a, wear a brace, but I asked them to should I wear a brace. They said it won't work, not for a torn meniscus. Well, it might just relax. What do I have to do for a torn meniscus? They can do an operation. Albert had it. You remember Albert was out for a while. I was out for well, about a week, and mm -hmm. he had a cast and everything. He had a torn meniscus and had the operation. But so that that was a you know he so was much what do younger. they do they sew it together it's uh, some kind of thing like that and it doesn't always work you know so what the hell anyway listen i um decided what i'm going to get you for christmas i'm giving you my list i don't want your list well you better give me your list i don't want a list what's on your list this year i haven't decided yet oh okay 
What's on your list? No, I, you, you, well, uh, 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 I don't want you to get me anything. Okay. <laughs> because I don't want you to have to spend you heard it, folks. your well-earned money on me. <laughs> You heard it. I, you're talking about a holiday gift, right? Yeah. Well, my birthday's also. Well, coming. it's always one <laughs> gift. It's it's a birthday you holiday. Know, that's a rip off because when it's your birthday, I get you a gift. What? And what? What did you get me? We had bought you dinner. Well, I'm buying you dinner. Oh really? Yeah. Oh okay. So there you go. That's it, huh? That's all I'm going to get. Well, anyway, so I, I've been looking around for a gift, and I. I found the perfect gift. Now, folks, I could I could play this in several ways. Okay, I could call this uh, um, uh, say we have now have a sponsor on the show and then play it and everybody could get a good laugh, uh, or I could just uh, I could say this is the <laughs> gift I'm going to give her for Christmas. <laughs> oh, I know it's what. <laughs> And I was watching television today. <laughs> you can't make and, this up. And the trouble with Fios is they have this one channel called Newsmax, which is like this really right-wing station with nothing but the worst talk show hosts I've ever seen anywhere. They're just, they're just terrible broadcasters, right? And they run this commercial. But today they weren't, uh, they weren't, today, was it today? Yeah, it was today. Yesterday. Yesterday. Uh, they weren't, um, running their normal programming, they were running documentaries on like uh, Princess, uh, you know, Queen, uh, Queen uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth and, and the, another one on Diana and so on. And what a good guy Hitler was. They're running one of those documentaries too. Anyway, uh, and they ran a commercial. And when I watched it, I said, if Saturday Night Live, this Saturday night, played this commercial, you would think it was one of their parodies. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you now, this is not a parody. The wind whispered through the forest. A storm is coming. You cannot defeat the storm. From the trees rose a resounding voice. I fear nothing. I come when the trumpet sounds. I am the storm, the great American grizzly. Introducing the original Trumpy Bear. The fearless, super plush American Grizzly. Trumpy Bear was born June 14th, Flag Day. Just find the secret zipper and pull out the flag blanket. Then wrap yourself in the red, white, and blue for comfort and warmth. Show your patriotism and proudly display Trumpy on Flag Day and on any American holiday. Trumpy can even honor your own family heroes. God bless America and God bless Trumpy Bear. Trumpy Bear sits proudly at the front of the motorcycle for all the world to see and loves to cruise with his brother. I'm a former Marine and I'm proud to have Trumpy Bear ride by my side. Once a Marine, always a Marine. Everyone knows Trumpy Bear loves to go to the golf course. When I ride with Trumpy Bear, he makes my golf game great again. Thank you, Trumpy Bear. Simply style his trademark hair and place him in his favorite chair. Even the toughest guys will love Trumpy Bear. When America is great, Business is great. When business is great, I am great. I love you, Trumpy Bear. I am an Army veteran. I am proud to own the Trumpy Bear, and I will always be proud to be an American. Order the Super Plus Trumpy Bear for only two payments of $19.95 and receive a special certificate of authenticity. Don't miss out on owning a piece of American history. Order now for only two payments of $19.95. Trumpy, the most fearless bear anywhere. Order now. Trumpy Bear. You yeah, can't yeah, make that up. That, that is, I swear to you, folks, it's that not a parody. That is real. That is not a parody. That's real. It's absolutely real. Okay? Too I'll play much. it again a little bit later, just it's for those of you who may have missed it. But that, that, who doesn't li who, For many of you, don't listen to the first half hour. Yeah. But, I mean, <laughs> that that is absolutely... The truth. For real. Yeah. And if I ran, they ran it on Saturday Night Live... This weekend, they would say, what a great parody of those guys. Did you see the Trumpy Bear thing with the, this bear? And it, the bear even looks like shit. <laughs> it looks you know? like him. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a cuddly-looking bear. It has a kind of a... Don't touch it, it, attitude. It, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you can, order, you can order your Trumpy Bear. You go gettrumpybear.com. And you can order it. And you were, you were wondering, and you and your friends... Uh, how many of these things they may have sold or not sold. 
And I postulated that they probably sold more to left-wingers than to Defin right-wingers. Definitely. Because I almost bought one, but then when I saw that with tax it was $46, I said, I don't want to give these people 46 bucks. You know, if they were charging 20 bucks, I might do it and say they, they're not going to get rich off of me. But, you know, they 40, $45 with tax. I would pay it. You would pay it well. well good, go I, have a, on. I have a bear collection. Then that's my that's my that's my desire for a gift for my birth for Christmas. That's is, your partial uh, I gift. Want a, I want a Trumpy bear. <laughs> that's what you want. I want a Trumpy bear. <laughs> can you believe that? I can believe it. This was amazing. It was just amazing. Only in America, folks. Uh, only in only America. in America. <laughs> Jeez, Almighty. <laughs> Trumpy bear. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Ten more minutes. What? Ten more minutes. Oh, by the way, and there's a one one uh, veteran or something, and his name is like Warpole or something like that. Some weird name. Just uh, can I play it again? Sure. Let's just play it one more time, just so that the, those of you who may have come in late on it, this is absolutely for real. I swear to you. The wind whispered through the forest. A storm is coming. You cannot defeat the storm. From the trees rose a resounding voice. I fear nothing. I come when the trumpet sounds. I am the storm, the great American grizzly. Introducing the original Trumpy Bear, the fearless, super plush American grizzly. Trumpy Bear was born June 14th, Flag Day. Just find the secret zipper and pull out the flag blanket. Then wrap yourself That's in the, the red, white, right and right blue there. for comfort and warmth. Show your patriotism and proudly display Trumpy on Flag Day and on any American holiday. Trumpy can even honor your own family heroes. God bless America and God bless Trumpy Bear. Trumpy Bear sits proudly at the front of the motorcycle for all the world to see and loves to cruise with his brother. I'm a former Marine and I'm proud to have Trumpy Bear ride by my side. Once a Marine, always a Marine. Everyone knows Trumpy Bear loves to go to the golf course. When I ride with Trumpy Bear, he makes my golf game great again. Thank you, Trumpy Bear. Simply style his trademark hair and place him in his favorite chair. Even the toughest guys will love Trumpy Bear. When America is great, business is great. When business is great, I am great. I love you, Trumpy Bear. I am an Army veteran. I am proud to own the Trumpy Bear, and I will always be proud to be an American. Order the Super Plus Trumpy Bear for only two payments of 1995 and receive a special certificate of authenticity. Don't miss out on owning a piece of American history. Order now for only two payments of 1995. Trumpy, the most fearless bear anywhere. Order now. Yeah, and, and, and you can get yourself a certificate of authenticity, and it's a piece of American history. Yeah, right. How is that, that it's a piece of American history? I have no idea. Well, we elected yeah. the scumbag. Anyway, I, I played it a second time for those of you who may have missed it the first time. Man, that is just so killer. I just love that. I, 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 I can't believe it. And the best part, there are a couple of things that, that they gloss over, and it's important that there's a secret compartment in the bear. With so, the flag. So you can take get your, fl your flag blanket. It's <laughs> an American flag you can use as a, as a flag, blanket. What were they called? The smugglers? Sm the snuggies. Uh, the well, snuggies. Yeah, but this wasn't a snuggie. This was just a blanket. blanket. And you can, so you can wrap yourself with a blanket of the American flag. And it's in the back of the bear. But I'm thinking, can you put it back in? I mean, it's, there's a it, lot of it's, it, it's, it's attached to the inside. You just yeah. push, it's a pouch. You just push it back I in. I could never, I'd have to fold it right and get it flat well, again. There's a zipper you could just push Once it. Once you get there. that flag out of there, you're never going to put it back in. Trumpy, the bear. Look at all the balls you're getting. Huh? Yeah, yeah those are more balls than, than I usually have. Wait, what am I saying? Anyway, uh, uh, it, 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 so you can order yours. Uh, t I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm, it's a Get Trumpy Bear. You don't believe me. I know you don't believe me. You Go think online. I made that up as a joke. Go to Get Trumpy, Trumpy Bear. Bear. GetTrumpyBear.com. Go to Trumpy Bear or is it Get? No, GetTrumpyBear.com. And you will be able to order your very own Trumpy Bear. And if I make these people money, I'm going to feel very guilty. Six more minutes. Uh huh. Six. Oh, you're counting the amount of time, huh? Yeah. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Oh, my bacon yak. 
<laughs> Sounds like Listen, what was wait, the name of the, you go the, to sleep. the what was the name of the woman on MSNBC? Something what? cunt. Oh, oh, oh! There's well, there's a, a woman on on uh, MSNBC NBC. named Casey Hunt. Casey Hunt. And and I know how kids are terrible when you're in school, and they will take your name and just oh. fuck it over. Like mine was Schwarzman, and they called me Schwegerman, or they they do anything they could to make it sound shitty. All right. Casey Hunt. What do you think they called her in high school? Hey, Hacy. <laughs> How you doing, Hacy? <laughs> yeah. So we'd say when I'm. And there's going... also there's also another woman they've got on MSNBC who probably went into news because she was abused as a uh, as a student at a school somewhere by her classmates. Her name is Katie Turr. <laughs> oh, I love her. She's yeah, great. But you know, guess what she got in school? Hey, turd. I don't turd. <laughs> I went to school with a Janet Schmuckler. Yeah. And a Barry Fuchs. And they made fun of them. Oh my they? God! Of uh, especially of Barry Fuchs. I mean, <laughs> they they made yeah. I mean, uh, you know. So uh, when you name your child, be very careful what you name your child. Or they may have a uh, a terrible childhood. Hey, listen. When we're through here and you're going to go to bed, would you on top of the thing? There's like uh, some uh, coldies. Would you bring them in so I can suck on them while the show's on? Because I I feel I'm. I could go something. now if it's okay and get them. No. <laughs> No, you cannot leave. I'll go in four minutes. You can only leave at first call. No, 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 no. I'm not even waiting for first call. You're today. not even more waiting for first no, call. No, huh? I'm tired. Uh, you're, you're, just, you're just terrible. I'm a terrible wife. Yeah, she almost wasn't going to do this tonight. He never lets me off, not one time. What do you mean? You don't. I only ask you to do one night a week. It's not like I ask you to do every day. I understand, but you had you had you had you had Wednesday off. I could have had you on Wednesday. You wouldn't have done it. Right. You would have used the same excuse. Hey, we can do it all the time. I don't want to. I don't care whether you do it or not. They do. Look, we have people, a lot of people listening now. I'm they, delighted. They, they care about you being on. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I know. I don't give a shit. I, but I'm, I'm using you to get people to watch. So you're using me. And I don't know if they're watching it because they go, can you believe he's married to that shrew? Or whether... <laughs> they say, can you believe she's married to that Idiot. Jew? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. Uh, we had a Jewish Thanksgiving, if you think about it. I didn't uh, make any Jewish Well, uh, We had Jewish people. But no, but I mean, the Jew, uh, uh, Jack's Jewish. Natalia's Jewish. Adrian's Jewish. Is her boyfriend Jewish? No. No. Only, the only Goyim in the place. We could have held a Seder if we wanted to. <laughs> we did. <laughs> we, we did. We did have a Seder. But it was, the turkey came out fine. Thank you. You know. Uh, however, turkeys don't seem as good these days as they used to be. Am I wrong? Or no. You, huh? Or is it just my taste buds? Or? Well, there's different kinds of turkeys. Yeah. What do you get? You get a, a hen, right? <laughs> or a tom? What's I'm not the, sure. What's the best to get? I'm not sure, but I got it. Well, with, wait a minute, you're the big chef. You should know what the best kind is. I don't know if it's get. a male or female. However, it has no drugs, mm -hmm. has no, you know, enzymes. I mean, it's really like all natural. Pay a little bit more for it, but it's worth it. I thought it was very juicy. Do you really believe that all natural shit? Yeah. Well, why do you believe it? When I lived in Washington, there was a place where we used to go, and literally they had the turkeys in the back, mm -hmm. and you order your turkey, and you hear some noise, and <laughs> the next thing they know is you're giving them a warm package. And I had to go back to my office with this warm package <laughs> that just got killed. Really? Yeah, some of the feathers were still hanging in there. Yeah. Oh, so gross. We did a shoot once for Midnight Blue in one of those places where they kill chickens live. <laughs> Remember the one with, what's her name, Sarah Palin in the yeah. back? Yeah, she, 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 she's, I'm, I don't know, she wasn't pardoning Yes, she was. She was, was pardoning she? a turkey in Alaska. In Alaska. And then in the background, the guys. <laughs> Cutting the throat of the turkey. And no, turning. no, it was a machine he puts them in. That's well, he puts it. the head in and the blood comes out. Well, then it in. cuts the head off uh. and the blood comes out. And, and she's saying, and I pardon this turkey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, but I went to one of those places, and they actually have this thing where they, they put the head in, chops it off, and then they throw them into something else, and it just pulls all the feathers out. Well, first they have to blood it. 
get the blood out. Huh? They get they turn it upside down to get the blood yeah, out. Yeah, but they do something to get all the feathers out. Too. You should put it in boiling water. You, well, but then you're starting to cook the chicken. That's no, for two seconds. Over and, two yeah. seconds, and then what? The, yeah, it's like the, a dip. And then all the f feathers fall. Well, out? pretty much, yeah. Oh. Have we have we all learned something here, folks? Okay, guys. Okay, she's gonna. She's, what do you it, want? Your cold. What you can come over here. You can come over here. What? Yeah, I, just bring me the coldies. If you can also find the throat lozenges in my drawer, this sugar-free throat, throat lozenges no, in the drawer, I would appreciate it because I think I'm <coughs> coming down with something. Okay, guys, call in. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna go get the coldies. Gonna, okay, mm, get my cold. I don't mm, want your mm, cold. <laughs> I'm, I I don't know if I'm getting a cold or not to no, tell you the truth. Now there's something to complain about. What? It's something to complain about. Yes, okay. I'll get your coldies. All right. Okay. Anyway, I'm gonna open up the phone lines here. Let me see here. Pa 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 pa. Let me open up the phone lines online. There we go. Um um. Let me see here. Oh. Carter tried to call. I see. Okay. Oh, it's his birthday. Carter uh, Stevens is the old porno, or uh, years ago porno director. He's still around. And he calls us every now and then, and we talk to him. So maybe he'll call us tonight, and we can talk to him as well. But anyway, I have the lines open now for Skype, so that if anybody wants to call and tell us how your Thanksgiving went, we would love to hear from you. And guess who's calling? Just, just as I said, see, here, here he is, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Carter Stevens. Hello, are you there, Carter? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can't see yeah, you, I though. Can't see. You're you can't see me. Yeah, I don't yeah, know if, you're, if your camera's working or not. Uh, for some reason, no. Well, yeah. Wait, no? Yeah. It doesn't matter. We have a still picture of you, of what, <laughs> of what looks like a jolly old man. So, you know... Um, I'll don't let the looks fool you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, how have you how have you been? Oh, let's put it this way: if it wasn't for doctors' appointments, I wouldn't have a social life. Really? Yeah. Yeah, my wife has has a social life with doctors, but it's it. She kind of goes to them just for the sake of going to them, you know. Uh, well, I just went through the whole. Uh, endoscopy, colonoscopy, and uh, just for a little flavor, uh, the pill cam to uh, look at in between the two. Well, here's what what I wanted to do. You know, they have an endoscopy which goes down your throat, okay, right. and then they have a colonoscopy which goes up your ass. Right. And uh, uh, what I wanted to do was get the get them at the same time and see if they could see each other. No, they don't. That's why they have uh, they have a pill camera that you literally swallow, and you wear a um, a computer around your waist. Yeah, and the pill goes through your small intestine, mm -hmm. where neither the colonoscopy nor the endoscopy can see. Yeah, and and and, 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 and uh, something, something slapping back, slapping Phil. Back. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Let me. I think it's, it, well, we're getting a little slap back. Hold on a second. There we, there we go. Now we're fine. Um, uh, y y y so it, 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 you took the pill cam. Did, did you get to see any of the pictures? Uh, no, the pill cam I did not see. Uh, <laughs> they did give me lovely uh, three by fives of the uh, colonoscopy and the endoscopy. Yeah. All of which look exactly the same to me. Yeah. So I don't, you know, well, I don't know. I had a colonoscopy and I put my pictures online on my Facebook page. <laughs> uh, I figured I was going to get my money's worth out of the whole deal. Hey, Phil, you I'm, look, I'm you, on Medicaid, so I didn't have to pay for it. Well, I'm on Medicaid too, you know. <laughs> but uh, uh, um, so, how did you come out? Everything come out okay? Um, not really. Uh, I have a small bleed in my small intestine. Mm -hmm. And they have to go in and try and seal it. Yeah. But evidently, there's only it's a very rare procedure, and mm -hmm. there's one surgeon down in Bethlehem. Yeah. Uh, who does it? Right. And I haven't heard from my gastroenterologist uh, as to an actual actual date. Who's he used in Jesus <laughs> down in Bethlehem? Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> 
Yeah. My, I thought you were operating in the manger. Jesus is my MD. Yeah. That'd be a great bumper. Uh, it's actually Jesus. Jesus, yeah. Uh, by the way, the voices you're hearing, uh, Mal, uh, or I should say uh, uh, Carter. Carter. <laughs> you know, I, I know you nobody, by both. I don't I don't make it a secret that my real name is Mal, but never, nobody you knows never, it. You, you never nobody did. Nobody knows by it except yeah. you. But oh, his, his, yeah, it, it shows how old you are. <laughs> His nom only the old New Yorkers knew me as Mal. His nom de porn was uh, was was uh, Carter Stevens, and how many films did you make? As Carter Stevens, I made a dozen feature films, thirty-five millimeters. So only a dozen? I thought I there were a lot. Even, that was that was one of the only ones that I made under as Carter Stevens. Under Carter Stevens were only films that I had complete control over. Yeah. I did a lot of films uh, and worked on a lot of films under the name Steve Mitchell. And yeah. I acted in a lot of films under about half a dozen other names as well. Yeah. I also made a couple of 16 millimeter uh, films um, under the name uh, D bird. D that was my dead. D that was my dead parrot uh, days. <laughs> What do you mean your dead parrot days? I was a big Monty Python fan. Oh, I see. Okay, so yeah. So I, I started a company called Dead Parrot Productions. <laughs> oh boy. Well, all, I thought you did a lot. I thought you directed more than that under Carter Stevens, but because when I knew you, I thought you were one of the more pr prolific people in the business. No, I, I, hi I hired. I was a hired gun. Yeah. I did a lot of shooting for a lot of other companies. I did a lot of uh, production managing. Uh, I did everything except sound work. Well, you did other stuff other than porn, though, too, didn't you? You did, like, industrial films and crap like that? Yeah, uh, before I started in porn. Yeah. My second porn film was Lickety Split. <laughs> it became a giant hit. And all of a sudden, Carter Stevens was getting, you know, a lot of work, more, more a lot more work than Mal Warb was. Yeah, yeah. Know? So, uh, so uh, you uh, lickety split. <laughs> you know, if I were to come up with a title for a movie of a porn film, I would lickety split would be one of the first names I'd come up with. You know, what a perfect name for a porn film. Actually, that I wrote that in. I, I took a course in screenwriting at the New School. <laughs> well, I'm good. And uh, I wrote this porn which broke every rule. It had too many people in it, had too many uh, locations in it, had uh, all sorts of things that broke all the, all the porn rules. I see. And a lot of, uh, one of the um, students complained to the teacher that uh, he was allowing me to write a porn film. And he said, listen, guy has already produced a porn film. He's probably the only person in this entire uh, um, class who will actually have this this script produced. Yes, exactly. And I was. <laughs> yep. By the way, I've been joined by Mark Thorner. Hello, Mark. How are you? Not used to this new Skype. This is like, what the hell? What do you mean the new, new Skype? Uh, I got a new version of Skype here, which is totally unfamiliar. Is this the one where you use the browser? Oh. I don't know, but it's very graphical and weird. What do you mean graphical? It's uh, nudity? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, it's just strange. I think you're maybe using the browser version. Nope, this is the app. This is the this is the app. Oh, okay. Well, uh, and you're using it on what? A, 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 a laptop or? Yeah, my Mac. Uh huh. Oh, the yeah. Mac. Oh yeah. Mac has a whole different orientation. I do this show on a PC, uh, and the Windows, reason is, yeah. is because it looks better, and I can frame it better than I can the stuff on the Mac because it does. Yeah. The Mac is like all on top of each other, and all, it's just weird. It's just really well, weird. I'm gonna try and pull you back and see if I can get my video to work. Okay. Uh, it, 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 okay. Uh, they say goodbye to Mel. Hey, so how you doing, Mark? Haven't talked to you in a while. Oh, not bad. It really? Not bad. Yeah. 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 So, uh, what, uh, what have you been doing? Just working? That's pretty much it. Yeah. But uh, I got yesterday and today off, so I'm very happy yeah. about that. 
Is this a new computer you have or just uh, because that your picture is phenomenal? No, it's the same one. Really? Yep. Because uh, you didn't, uh, we, you know, we didn't have, have, um, oh, here comes, here, here comes Mal again. Let's see if we can, uh, if we can get a picture on him. Okay. Try for the picture. Mal, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Do you see anything? No. Yeah, no. Well, we have a still picture of you. Uh, do you have uh, do you have a little camera icon on your browser? Uh, I'm not in the browser. I'm in Skype. I mean, well, Skype. I mean, in Skype. Yeah, I do, but it's not connecting. Is is it ghosted out or is it just? Uh... It's, there's yeah, there's a line through it. Okay, well, click on it and see what happens. The other party can't see you yet. Press the button below to start your video. Okay. There we go. Now it's whirling. There you are. My goodness. Oh, there he is. There's the man, the legend. The, the legend. Do you, you know Val's work, uh, Mark? Uh, sort of. Have you jerked off to his work? <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't want to admit that he knows my work. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I always love when people will come up to me and say, how do I know you? I say, you look at porn, don't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you, ever, did you ever get that? I know you from somewhere. Where do I know you from? You know. But uh, yeah, I met Mal, Mal back in the uh, in the uh, Midnight Blue days, and I've got to say, I mean, of, of all the porn directors, you were the most accessible, the most friendly, uh, the best one to interview. You you you, and you were always there for us. You know, when we needed. Well, I'm never ashamed of what I did. Yeah, you know, I didn't make kiddie porn. I made I made sex films for adults. Right. You know, if they didn't want to see it, nobody put a gun to their head. They didn't have to right. pay to see it. You know, so I was never ashamed of what I did. Well, you know, I was willing to be interviewed. There's a lot of talk these days about sexual harassment and so on, and we talk about that in the. I movie. was never sexually harassed. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. No, but my question is. No, I, my question is, it, it was there, it, they, of course, this went on in the movie business. We know that. We know about the legendary casting couch. But the, the question that I would ask you is, uh, in the porn industry, was it less <laughs> did, common? Did they have to screw to get a job? <laughs> yes, but only on camera. Yeah, but I mean, it I hate was, the screw. Was there on the, camera? There was. There was. Why would they do it yeah, off camera? There was really not the same kind of harassment that went on not in porn. Uh, you know, because uh, all, the only reason you had to fuck to get the job was that you had to fuck on the job. Exactly. Yeah. But in, remember, we're talking the '70s. Mm -hmm. We were we were all outlaws. We were all a friendly little band of fuckers, anyway. Yeah. So it was practically incestuous yeah uh we we were all screwing off the set as well as on the set yeah so th there really was no pressure yeah and it, it and it, it was i remember in the early days in new york when i did midnight blue and when i saw, was familiar with the scene that it was a small family i mean all the people that were in them they knew each other they hung out with each other you know uh yeah. We had our own bar, Bernard's yeah. on 48th Street. You know, it, it was it was a, a, a family. It really was. Yeah. And and all of a sudden, porn. New York was the porn center in the in the United States, and then all of a sudden, it moved out to the West Coast. Well, that it really didn't. It there it always existed on the West Coast, but it was a separate industry. They yeah. did a, a whole totally different type of porn film. We did more acting, more plot. They were pretty people. You know, the, the girls in in, uh, in West Coast porn were um, rejected from uh, the Hollywood scene. So they were a lot prettier than the New York girls. But the New York girls could mostly act. I'll tell you, the New York girls were sexier. Yes. You know, I always felt California girls. Wanted, everybody that was in porn was doing it because they enjoyed it. Yeah. It wasn't a great deal of money. It was better than working nine to five, but not that much better. I almost found that the, the people who were in porn in New York at that point were doing it kind of 
as a rebellion, you know? Oh, yes. We were, it, we were all yeah. outlaws. It's not a rebellion anymore. I mean, if anything, it's, no, now you know, it's now it's a multi-million dollar business. Well, yeah, probably not as much, though, because I think what's happened is, I mean, you can go online and get all, all the free porn you want. You don't have to pay for it. You know, I don't I don't remember where I read it, but I, I heard the Internet once described as a profit free zone <laughs> that any any but any business can't make money on the Internet. You can't sell what well, everybody else is giving away. Hey, hey, I'm proof of that. <laughs> you know. So am I. <laughs> the only thing I have to sell here are Trumpy bears. You know. By the way, let me let, let's let's talk about something else for a couple of minutes with everybody else here because we got Jeff Stein, we got Phil Meyer. How you doing? They, we've got uh, we've got the lovely and attractive uh, Mark Thorner, uh, and thank God you're all calling me because I I would imagine. Uh, we've got a lower audience than we normally have because this is like the Thanksgiving weekend, uh, and maybe we maybe we shouldn't have even done a show tonight. But I just I don't know. I just well, I, there's at least five of us. Yeah, there's least, well, there's five of us, right? Um, um, Phil, did you see the you Trump? Can do the, you can do what Trump does and say five hundred. Did you see our Trumpy Bear commercial? Uh, yeah, no, I was listening uh, on the uh, Gabnet uh, audio, so yeah. I, I didn't. Yeah, but uh, uh, you know, maybe you can monetize Gabnet. <laughs> and you saw it, right, Mark? Uh, I, I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm convinced that we somehow got shifted into a parallel dimension, and we didn't know about it. You didn't think that that when I saw this thing, I went. I know it's got to be paid for because it's on a station that takes ads and it's a serious right-wing television station, Newsmax. But I couldn't believe that it wasn't a parody. Isn't that, if you if that was on Saturday Night Live next Saturday, you'd be, you'd really believe so it was one of their parodies. Buy it. Yeah, you, well, I you, thought it was a parody. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it isn't. It really isn't. I mean, and the fact that they give you an American flag that's in Trumpy's back that you can pull out and use as a blanket. And it actually stated that Make America Great Again is copyrighted. Y yes. President Donald Trump. <laughs> they had a thing on the bottom of the picture that said that. So, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just bizarre. Did you see it, Jeff, at all? At just a second of it at the, at the end when when you were uh, starting yeah, up. I play it for you guys again, but the only thing is you could only hear it and see it online because uh, you don't get the audio feed uh, for it. Uh, but, uh, man, uh, just a You minute. know, I got a thing today, this afternoon, the Trump store sale, Black Friday, 30% off. It says he's got a great deal for you. Who, Trump? Uh, uh, Trump. Uh -huh. Says the entire store is on sale. He's got new Christmas Make America Great Again hats, ornaments, Christmas ornaments, T-shirts, mugs, Wait a minute. classic edition collectible coins, and the last chance on inauguration gear. You know, I guess the stuff that he didn't sell during the well, uh, he, during the inauguration. He probably made up too much of that stuff, thinking more people would show up. He says, there's only one official Trump store today only, and all your favorite gear is 30% off. Uh, we will sell out. So, uh, but there's no Trumpy bear on this no, official. No Trumpy. Trump, he Trump, sold out Trump. long ago. Yeah. To begin with. You know, I, I'm looking. Uh, now, I, I can, you know, I can get you to Trump gear. Uh, I can get you to T-shirts and mugs, but no bear. Listen, I got to tell you, Trumpy bear has been out for four months already. I just caught up with it. Oh, so it's yesterday's news. Yeah, but but what I'm thinking of is I would have loved to have been in on the business meetings about Trumpy Bear. Because yeah. I'm sure their lawyers said they probably wanted to call it Trump Bear. And the lawyers said you can't do that because Trump has his name on buildings and stuff. And he could maybe sue you for using a copyrighted name. So what do you think if we, if, we, if, if we call it Trumpy Bear? And they probably went, okay, the lawyer said, that'll be fine. You can call him Trumpy Bear. No, it's not Vermont teddy bear people. This is the Trumpy bear people. 
Well, you ought to get a hold of them, you know, Google them, find out where they are, and tell them that you sold more Vermont teddy bears than anyone else on the radio. I don't, want, do I, it I don't want to. I would feel guilty if I sold even a single Trumpy bear. <laughs> oh. Uh, you know, it's just. You let's, gotta go, let's, it, it, let's face it, uh, uh, Alex. Yeah. It's, it's not your market. It's not what? It's really not your market. No, it's not my market. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to push it, you know. It's easy. <laughs> I do it all the time. Oh boy! So I, so I, I, if if you didn't see the Trumpy Bear commercial, I may actually wind up putting it on the Facebook page, separate good. and apart. But you can watch it also uh, when we put this post this thing up, or you can actually, I think you can even if you're watching the live feed right now, just move it back to the uh, to the towards the beginning of the show, and that's when we played the thing, so you can watch it. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, it's for real. It's for real. I'm not lying to you. I swear to you. How much are they? Uh, they are 1995. Uh, no, 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 1995 with two payments of 1995. Oh, just <laughs> it, It's 3990 if you want to pay all at once, plus shipping and handling, bringing it to $46. And I figured... Even as a joke, I don't want to spend that kind of money. <laughs> what? No, there we go. There. Uh, well, what is? What wait, is that? Wait a minute. Uh, that was it. Uh, he. But I you, guess I must have pushed on something. Yeah. Yeah. I, obviously, because you yeah. went to some German dolls there or something. There we go. There you go. There's a, tr a Trumpy bear online. Mm. You, you froze. There we go. See. There you go. It is 1995, but it's two payments of 1995. All right. But you know what you get? Up. You get a certificate of authenticity, and I think that's important. <laughs> uh, from Trumpy. Yeah, you get a, uh, he's a, got and, the hair. And, but, uh, and, and it says, uh, you, this is your, only, your, your only chance to get a piece of history. Now, this, they consider this bear a piece of history. What it is is a teddy bear with some bad hair. So, yeah. You know. Uh, oh, you know, I got to own it. <laughs> now let me let me ask uh, let me ask Alex what you should start marketing a Mueller and a wolf a Mueller and a wolf doll yeah yeah uh, it, uh, you have in front of you uh, Mal a big screen now is that a magnifier uh, that's a magnifying glass to make my uh, um, screen a little easier to see. Now do you have a small screen or is this or no I'm just blind. You're just blind. Do you think it was all that jerking off, Mal? Yeah. Hey, you remember um, the days? That's what my mother always said. When there was a little green screen on a computer and you could only get 80 characters uh, across, uh, you know, on one line. Yeah. What, yeah. what about and that? It was, well, you'd need something like that to be able to see the screen. Yeah, I had an Okie Data that was... That was uh, one of the first uh, CPM machines. Well, the old yeah. the old Atari computers were eighty cost me characters across. Five thousand dollars, as I remember. Yeah. yeah, I I had a Moro MD3 CPM. I had a CPM this I, morning. Oh, well, that yeah. was a BM. Excuse yeah. me, I'm sorry. That's because uh, you stay up late. By the way, you know the best advertising uh, slogan I ever heard, and somebody has kind of co-opted it, but there was a. Uh, there was a laxative, a laxative company or a company that made medical laxative, right? And I can't remember the name of it, but it said, let's just say it's called Blasto. Let's just say that for the sake of, of argument. It went, uh, take as uh, Blasto in the PM for a BM in the AM. And I swear to you, that's, that's how the ad read. Okay. Now somebody has one similar to that just for something saying, you know, uh, but doesn't, they don't use the word BM. They just say, take it in the PM for a better morning in the AM or whatever. But uh, that was one of the best advertising campaigns I ever heard. So be that as it may. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, so we we you know we we're, we've been t is there anything new in the uh, sexual harassment? I think there's been kind of a pause in all of that. Because uh, it's it's Thanksgiving, and uh, well, I I don't know. I saw 
a new post. I've only seen it once. Yeah. That two more women, Al Franken. Yeah, I saw that. So that brings it up to four. Yeah, but now, what did he supposedly do with those women? You know, I'm supposedly I'm not... grabbed their ass while taking pictures. Well, you know something. After, you I got to tell you something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you are, Phil. Uh, uh, he, here's the deal with that. Uh, now, I was never an ass grabber, but then again, I was never an ass man. Uh, I but I uh, and you couldn't tit grab because that was too obvious. Asses are easier to grab because they're behind. But uh, what I don't understand is why everybody wants to give the same weight to what Franken is accused of as to what Weinstein did. You know, the penalty is the same. Well, they're both Democrats. <laughs> well, that's why they're gotten they're after Franken. Yeah, that's why they're after Franken. Yeah. But I mean, the, the the simple fact is, he took thousands of pictures at these state fairs, yeah. you know, and three women have come out and said he grabbed his, or his ass. Her I've, had ass. Pe- I've had people take pictures with me, you know, in the old days when I was a big shot, and uh, uh, they, uh, you know, they would put the, they would kind of put an arm around my waist, and I would put an arm around their waist. And sometimes the, the hand might have slipped down or something. You know, but I think a lot of these women are coming forward because they want they want to get publicity. I mean, these are not what I call her, you know, horrendous accusations against. You ever see no, I, I don't. I don't think it's publicity because they're the last two were anonymous. I think it's well, a political I'm even, I'm, act job. I, I, yeah, but when they're anonymous, I'm even more suspicious. Alex, you ever see some of those women that go to those state fairs? Their asses are so big, he couldn't get his, his he couldn't hand around avoid it. them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they go and get some of those corn dogs, and that's it's all over. You know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> flume cakes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you'd need to shoot those on 70 millimeter to get the whole ass in. <laughs> right, right. And and the, the most uh, that Mal ever worked with was uh, 16 millimeter? No, I sh- all my f- all my Carter Stevens films were thirty five mil. Really? Yes. That's expensive. Yes, that's why I only made twelve Carter Stevens films. Well, he, he was the guy that said they, they it took me months. I mean, we we had a, a month of pre production, a week of shooting, and two months of editing. So I, if I could turn out four a year, it was a lot. You got to remember, in those days, it was all done on film. Right, and and that was an ex- much more expensive process than tape today, you know. Now, did you have to develop the film the same way I would develop like thirty-five millimeter black and white uh, a photographic film? In, you know, in a well, yeah, a except that would be run through a color uh, bath instead of yeah. a black and white bath. But it was sent to a lab. They were professional. Before I got into the porn business, I had my degree is in photographic science. I was a, a supervisor at Movie Lab, which was the third largest uh, independent lab in the country. Oh, shit. We did we did things. Uh, <laughs> we went all the way from uh, murder on Party Beach to the pawnbroker. <laughs> hey, but it was a chance then, if you had to send it out, that they could have screwed up your uh, your um, uh, negative. It happened. It, it it's 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 happened. Sure. I mean, did but, you, uh, you know, the, that's why I was paid uh, it, by the labs. I was a, a, su- a quality control supervisor to make sure it didn't happen. Yeah, but yeah. what happened? Like you, you made films, and then you had to send your film out to be developed. You know, you right. couldn't do that yourself. They would make a print yeah. from it, which would be our work print. Yeah, and yeah. it would come back to us, and we would cut it physically. Did they ever? Did and, they ever? And did they it together? Was it ever lost, or, or uh, you know, you're dealing with uh, uh, light accidentally hitting the, the film uh, as it's being transported? No, you're, you're, you're I, I was, I, I was like, no, uh, you. In those days, we had professional film laboratories. Yeah. You know, and then that was their business, so it didn't get okay. light struck or it didn't get ruined in the bath. Yeah. I mean, you paid a lot of money to get them processed. Yeah, because I would hate to think that, you know, you had one great cum shot and it got blown by some bad lab work. Uh, Yes, uh, 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 Jeff. 
Yeah, it's, I used to work at a, a film lab, and uh, I remember that the guys would work in the dark to do the whole process. With a red and, light? Uh, yeah, and um, some of the chemical stuff was, was pretty sophisticated uh, processes. And then, I'm not quite sure, but if, once you have a good film and you've edited it, then they want to make dupes. And I think they used to the process in the same lab. Am yeah. I right, Mal? Once, once you cut the film, you had a work print, you cut the film, you then sent that film with the negative to a negative cutter who would carefully splice and make the same cuts in the negative. Then when you had a finished negative, it would be you would make a master, an inner yeah. what we called an inner positive. Yeah. And from that inner positive, you would in turn make a duplicate negative. And the duplicate negative is what would you would use to make prints from. So the original negative stayed in the can and never got touched. Today, today you, can, sh you can shoot something with a GoPro, go into your computer, and within an hour have it edited. Exactly. You know, uh, and, and back and in those days, like the process was having to cut the film, splice it, da, 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 have it developed, uh, all That's kinds of things. I say it took us two months of post-production post yeah. to cut the film. Yeah. Uh, and but there's a workflow that you use digitally to make sure you don't blow your media that, that you have, that you back it up and you have multiple copies before you yeah, that's, sit that's down simple. and that's so, edit. That's simple. That's a, that's a walk that's in the simple, park. But most people don't do it. No, I, I, I back up everything I shoot. I have it on two separate discs. I have it sometimes yeah. on th two different machines. Yes, uh, uh, Jeff. Jeff? Gross. About 42nd. Go How's ahead. that now? You're fine. You're, You're okay. fine. You're good. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I worked on like 42nd Street uh, and the lab was there. And we did a lot of work for NBC. And the news came in every day to be processed. And it had to be processed and it, fast. And it had to be done fast. And they also... Used... When I was in Movie Lab, we did a lot of NBC news work. Yeah. In fact, I have a 10-second clip that I've saved for years, a little black and white clip that was shot during a hurricane in New Jersey. And it's just a shot of this pier, a long pier, and waves coming over it. And then all of a sudden, this wave comes up and just, it comes right over you. And suddenly the camera pulls back and you can see the car window rolling up and you can hear the guy say, <laughs> What the fuck? Why did you close the fucking window? And the other guy goes, Jesus, it came up so goddamn fast. He made 500 copies of that and sent it to every station in the country. <laughs> of course, it was never run anywhere, right? Except in yeah. the station part. I mean, yeah, TV news used to have to be done on film. And, yeah. uh, uh, you know, I'll tell you something. I think I ruined the porn industry. I'll tell you how. Because I was doing Midnight Blue, as you may remember, and we did Midnight Blue. I was one of the, we did it on tape, and then I decided, why don't we try doing a porno tape? And so I went to a distributor, and we we said, well, we'll, we'll turn out a porno tape for you. And they said, what? I said we're going to do the whole thing on video. They said, how much are you going to spend? I said, I think we can do it for, I don't know, a thousand dollars. And they went, what? Because how much, even in your day, how much would it cost for one of My your first films? My first film cost $25,000. Okay, so when I walk in My and say- My last film yeah. cost $125,000. See, I mean- that was so, over the period of yeah. about 10 years. So you did them on film. I said, I can do it on video for 1000 which was essentially that's what right. we were going to pay right. the models, you know? And uh, he, he said, okay, go do it and bring it back and let's see. And we did it. <clears throat> and they were amazed. And that was the first video porn, I believe, to ever be done and distributed. Uh, and, and after that, everybody saw that you could do porn cheaply by using video. And the whole industry went to video. And, uh, you know, everybody and his mother was making porn. Right. You know, in, in, in your day, you had to know about film and how to operate a camera and how to, you know, how did they get the film developed and how to edit it and all of that. And there was much more 
craft you had to have at your disposal even to turn out porn. But today, I mean, come on, anybody with a with a uh, with a, you with, know, a with a with, with, a, with, a, with a, a phone with an iPhone can do porn. And, and they do. Well, as an experiment, I took my phone and I went on vacation and I only took the phone. I used to, I always took cameras, but this time I just took the phone and shot the whole thing in 4K on my iPhone. And it was fine. It looked great. You know. Don't you wish you had that back then? No, I would never have been able to hold it steady. <laughs> Something that <laughs> small and light. Listen, I've got a, I used to, I'm have, I used to shoot with a camera that weighed 40 pounds. I've got a thing here. Watch that, turn this on. Huh? Watch, watch him turn this thing on. He's got a steady well, cam well, no, on. I, uh, no, I, I'm, I don't know. Well, I don't really know if I'm if I have enough going here. Uh, but uh, this is a thing called a, uh, this, and for people out there who are watching, let me also, let me just uh, hold a, oh, I'm frozen. Oh, okay. Well, uh, wait not a face on, uh, hold, you're hold not on, on Skype. I, I got I to gotta do a little change here uh, in order to, uh, so the public can see it. I've got to, I've got to redo my camera. Hold on. Uh, I'm, uh, this is going <clears> to take a second. It's going to take a, just a bit here. Let me change my webcam to that one and then to that one. And then I have my picture right there. We go. Now we're fine. Uh, for some reason, every now and then I, I have problems. Okay. Now let me, let me show you this. Um, the audience can then see it as well. Uh, uh but it, it isn't working right. I'm having problems with it uh, and I have to work on it, but you turn the thing on uh and uh come on there we go see what it does and then it's like yeah oh it it actually was is working <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah uh but it says low battery i thought i charged the damn thing oh well anyway it, it you know it's like it's it's a uh, it's a steady cam and it's it, it, you shoot with this thing and it's just phenomenal just absolutely phenomenal so uh anyway let me turn it off it was working that time. It actually turned on the camera. But I, I have, oh, hold on a second. Now I've got wires all over the place. And it's not good. Okay. That is not. All right. Uh, oh, I see. That's why. Okay. Um, so, that you know, I, I wish I had one of these things when I was, uh, uh, when, years ago. Because we could have really done some great stuff. Uh, so, you know, so when you say you can't get steady with it, well, uh, you can, these things are, 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 do steady themselves and, uh, you know, uh, are, are really, really terrific. Uh, yeah, but the whole point was when I was doing film, there was no steady cam. Oh, I used to get a lot of work as a cameraman yeah. because yeah. I was the steadiest cameraman around. You know, I was working with a 40 pound camera yeah. and a 20 yeah. pound, uh, a battery belt. And well, I can hold it steady. The reason, I'll tell you one thing. What happened was I was using, you know, when I was doing video, a camera that in the beginning, I think they weighed something like about maybe eight, nine pounds, okay? And they were light compared to that. The heavier right. the camera, the better, because you were steadier with a heavy camera than you were with a light camera. As long as you could hold it up. Is, uh, well, <laughs> well, yeah, you know. Oh, Same I, thing went for the porno actor. Oh, I, when I first started oh, doing yeah. video, I had to have a camera. Then I had a cable that went to the machine. Uh, and uh, so somebody was carrying the machine, and I was carrying the camera. I mean, and if there were, we ever had to run down the street, it became a real ri laugh riot, you know. Uh, and I used to see that happen sometimes in the early days with the news people. There would be a riot, and all of a sudden they'd have to run like crazy, and they've got two people trying to keep in sync with each other so they don't get too much slack in the in the cable. Uh, but uh, I, was shoot, I got a story for you. I was shooting a scene for a series of loops that were men in uniform, and I was I I wanted to get an outdoor shot yeah. of a guy in a sailor's outfit picking up a girl on the street. And we were out on 8th Avenue, yeah. about 32nd Street, somewhere around there. Yeah. And I'm yeah. shooting, and all of a sudden, police cars come with the lights 
running, the sirens blaring. They come from every direction. And all of a sudden, they're pushing the whole crowd away. And they leave me standing in the middle of the street. I guess they figured I was a news guy because I had the, the, the big camera. Oh, wow. And I suddenly realized that they were going into a single occupancy hotel across the street with their guns drawn. <laughs> and I'm standing in the street directly in front of this uh, doorway. And I said, I said, okay, thank you. Goodbye. And took the yeah, hell out of there. Okay, let me, the ask, let me ask you something, Mal. Did, did you see the HBO series, The Deuce? No, I don't get HBO. But I was interviewed by uh, one of the producers. Yeah. Who uh, spent a couple hours with me on the phone talking about the old 42nd Street. Yeah. So they did do some research. Oh, they did a lot of research. Uh, there's some people I know who have a thing called the Rialto Report, which is right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. I know Ashley. Yeah, and yeah. And, yeah. and they and they deal. You you know about them too, Mark. It's really it's an interesting site. It's about old porn. In fact, they approached me because they want to use two episodes of my life in the passing lane, which had to do with Midnight Blue, or maybe three episodes. And I said, go ahead, use it, because they do a nice job. But they also were consulting on that they were paid consultants they were paid consultants and they they really uh, uh i just spilled my guts for free yeah oh really uh but they did a lot of research for that show and it it oh, was yeah. it was pretty accurate even down to the trash on the streets you know i mean they there had to be a person they hired to litter the streets just to give it that new york uh 70s look because there wasn't a street you'd walk down that didn't, sidewalk you'd walk down, didn't have trash on it, you know. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, I was just wondering if you'd seen it and how you felt, how accurate you felt it was. No, I didn't get a chance. I haven't had a chance to see it. it takes place, I'll see it when it comes out on DVD. It takes place in 70, starts in 73. And I started Midnight Blue, I think, in 74. And I don't know, I think you were already making films by then, right? Yeah, my first film was around 72. Mm -hmm. It was right after uh, my, my first film was The Collegiates, uh, which took me about a year to make to get the money and, and everything else. And by the time I made it, uh, Deep Throat had come out. And yeah. all, it was a porn market. Well, let me ask you this, though. Back then, uh, it, it was illegal. Uh, of course. You know, it was. I was arrested. I, 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 yeah. What were you? Which one were you arrested for? Collegiates. I was arrested. Oh, okay. So, oh, no, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Hold it. Um. No. no it was Lickety Split that I was arrested for. Yeah. And and it was wholesale promotion of uh, of obscenity slash manufacture. That was the charge. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Eventually, I. Took a non a a, a uh, corporate uh, felony. The corporation pleaded guilty because I told them they could lock the, the seal up for as long as they wanted. Yeah, as yeah. long as I was out free. Exactly. But uh, but but it's still it, it was illegal back then. And uh, how did uh, uh, did you ever get arrested again? Uh, yeah, I was arrested several years later. Uh, no, well, yeah, I was arrested for kitty porn. Kitty porn. Um, there was a question of whether this girl was of age or not. Uh, luckily, I had always kept records, copies of uh, the um, of their IDs, a picture ID, and I kept them with the releases. So I had proof that I did not knowingly use a minor. Yeah. So the charges were dropped. I was never uh, uh, indicted. Right. Was she a minor uh, with false uh, ID? Don't know because she disappeared before they could uh, uh -huh. bring the, ch the charges to court. Well, but, but when they but were, I have yeah. I have no doubt that she probably was a minor, mm -hmm. you know. But she gave me uh, ID that said she was over eighteen. In other words, you did, you did dil due diligence in order to prove that you know to right. prove to yourself that she was of age. Yes. Well, you can't do much more than that, can you? No. Yeah. But still cost me a fortune. Yeah. Uh, did they ever have they uh, ever tried the, to... old, the, uh, the my standing joke is people used to say, "Oh, you're in porno. 
you must have made a lot of money. I said, no, but I have a lawyer who has a beautiful summer home I paid for. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is that today, I'm sure, there are very few people who ever get arrested for doing porn. You know, it, it's very infrequent. Uh, and my question would be, I mean, back then you were just one step ahead of the law is what you were. I mean, it was almost quasi-legal. But if they wanted to get you, they could get you on something. No, it was it was not quasi legal at all. Well, no, it but was you but illegal. You, but you had Deep Throat playing in a New York theater. It, what's interesting about Deep Throat is uh, somebody uh, went after them here in New York, and 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 the case, and they lost the case in New York City, New York yes, City. They did. But they, they won the they case. Were, they were arrested in both. Binghamton, New York, yes, and right. in New York City. And what I was going to say Binghamton, is... Binghamton, they were found not guilty, but in New York City, they were found obscene. Yeah. Which says that the community standards of Binghamton, New York, are wilder than they are in New York City. <laughs> no, but it, I, somebody said they felt the reason why it didn't get found guilty in Binghamton is that the people up there were a lot more practical about this sort of thing, you know? They weren't as upset by it. They just went, hey, you know, do what you want to do. Just live your life. You know, that they had a much more blasé attitude towards this sort of thing. Whereas in New York, there were like, you know, there were district attorneys trying to make, uh, make a name for themselves by busting deep throat. And, you know, it was, it was ridiculous. Oh, yeah. By the way, the first time I was arrested was three days before the election. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you see, also, I mean, uh, there was always a thing about community standards. And, no, there wasn't and, always. That well, came later. Well, no, but they always that said that you that had was... you were in violation of community standards. And I said, in New York City, there's a, a standard that I could violate? Right. You know, I mean, you, you're saying that uh, the community standards of New York City aren't what porn portrays? <laughs> I'm sorry, you know. When did uh, they do Behind the Green Door? Oh, that was... That, that was, was the Mitchell Brothers, right? That was after Deep Throat. Oh. Uh, and it was, I think, shortly after Deep Throat because the Mitchell Brothers felt that once Deep Throat came out, a lot of people started getting braver about doing this sort of thing. Right, Mal? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've never seen Behind the Green Door, but isn't that the one where they use condoms? No. No. No, oh. but, but they Which did was... use they did use the Altamira Hotel. Oh, really? <laughs> this is yeah. a I live just below that. Times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was shot. It was the, no uh... such thing. We were we were a very special generation. We were the generation after the pill and before AIDS. Yeah. We were the only generation that did that always went bareback. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody used condoms in the seventies. Well, there was an AIDS there was back no then. Reason. Uh, yeah. you, you know, and if you if you had some kind of social disease, you could pretty much tell the person had a social disease. Right. You get, you know. and, you got a, and, and, and you, if you picked up a case of the clap, you got a shot in the ass and you a week later you were fine. Right. But right. It, you know, it wasn't until AIDS came along, you know, that all of a sudden sex became now, dated. Do you know, dirty. It, this is an At interesting first, question. I've never asked anybody in the porn industry this. And, and all the time that I was working peripherally with Midnight Blue in that uh, with that business, uh, I've I've never asked this question. And I, just, I, I I was there anybody that you know of who was working one of your films and while working one of your films got pregnant and had a baby? No. Oh, because I I was just wondering if that ever happened. You know, that, not that you, I know that of. you could call it an actual porn baby. No, you know, well, I've never heard of it. Right. So, yeah, well, you know, you've lived an interesting life, my I mean, friend. There were, were there were porn girls who got pregnant, but not on the set. No, I but, mean, but uh, I'm saying uh, why Jose London had a boy got pregnant uh, with her boyfriend. Hmm. And uh, I actually shot her for men's magazine when she was uh, eight months gone. And she had the, the baby yeah. and uh, yeah. raised it and very happy. Fuck you, Demi Moore. You know, uh, but uh, the thing I was, I was just wondering if anybody had ever done a porn film. And that while, that, while they were doing the scene, got pregnant doing it. And then they could later on say to their kid, not only can I show you when you came out of my birth canal, because we were taking video on that, 
but here's you getting, you know, getting created. So I guess that's never happened. Well, you would have thought. Not it, that I know of. It, 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 not that you know of. Uh, and, and oh, there's one other thing. This is this is interesting. Uh, there, they, they, the powers that be would do anything they could do to besmirch porn, and they would always create rumors of things to try and start rumors. And the biggest one, of course, was uh, snuff porn. Right. And Al Goldstein put out put up a million dollars to anybody who could who could show him a real snuff film and nobody well, ever was able to produce know, it. You do know that the last five minutes of the film snuff were shot in my studio. Yeah. It, but it wasn't a snuff film. No, of course not. Yeah. But I, we, <laughs> my girlfriend and I were having dinner down in little Italy one day and, uh, uh, cafe Luna. Yeah. And, uh, there was a table about two tables behind us. And there's a guy going on, I saw this film. I want them to investigate. She was really killed. There was no question. And I'm choking on my spaghetti. Yeah. Well, a lot of people were mad at that. A lot of people in the porn industry were mad over that film because they, they, they because the whole thing about snuff films existing was a total myth. You know. Yeah. And I, and this kind of gave cre was, this kind of gave was, credence to it. You know, it was trying to get, hey, we we have a real snuff film here. I was approached by the New York City Police Department yeah. by the uh, uh, officer who had arrested me yeah. uh, to look at some of the films, uh, so-called snuff films, right? And to advise them as to whether they were real or not. Yeah. And I sat down. There were about like four loops, and they were so badly done. I mean, there was no question they were phony. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, I, and I explained to them and showed them why, yeah. et cetera. Well, it's, no one yeah. has ever found uh, a real snuff film. I'm sure they exist. Yeah, yeah. Because they're perverts out there, but, you know. So, have you been, so have you been, you, you, do you follow the news? Do I follow the news? Yeah. Which news? The news about this guy who's president, Trump. When I can stomach it, yes. <laughs> now you see Thanks the guy. The guy here, Adam. Phil Meyer here, is probably the only guy here that would actually buy a Trumpy bear. Uh, hat. You got the hat. <laughs> Boy, those are the worst hats in the world, Phil. As I said once, and I'll say it again, it looks very familiar to me. And, and then I remembered it's the same kind of hat that Elmer Fudd wears in the cartoons. Yeah, can you do can you do Elmer? Belly, 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 belly. Little of him. I can't. <laughs> okay. I'm hunting rabbits. <laughs> I don't know. It's the best I can do at this age. Yeah, it was, it was very. No, good. I, I I was a very staunch no. Bernie Sanders supporter. Yeah, yeah. Well, I bet you were disappointed in that one. I mean, the fix, yeah. the fix was very in on that so. one. How, do you feel? Did you feel, uh, um, uh, uh, Mark? That there was there was a fix where Bernie Sanders was concerned. Feel something went on, something went on through that whole thing. Yeah, and it, it, it stinks. Yeah, and it, to me, if it seemed that obvious to me, it, you know, and I see a lot of smoke and mirrors still. Yeah, yeah. I thought there was a fix when I heard about super delegates. You know. <laughs> I, I know that they voted these things in, but I thought the fix was in. Well, yeah, the, well, the fix, uh, the the super delegate thing certainly didn't help Bernie. You know, yeah. I mean, it, it just was that. I don't know. I just, I just feel that if you you vote for somebody, your vote should count, and and you suddenly realized in this election your vote didn't count. Like for instance, I live in New York. Okay. And, okay, I voted for Hillary. Why? Because I felt I had to. You know, I mean, I wasn't going to vote for Trump. and those. Oh, that's, that's the way I voted. The, I wound the, up voting yeah, for those, Hillary the, for the same reason. Those douchebags who, uh, who, who are the Green Party and so on really are, you know, come on. You want them for president? Anyway, the point is that 
I felt that there was no reason for me to go to the polls because you know how New York's going to vote. There was no chance that Hillary wasn't going to get the yeah. nomination here in New York City. She wasn't going to get the electoral votes. So really, when I'm, I go in, I vote. I'm one of a 3 million, 4 million people who vote New York City, and now it's all boiled down to a handful of delegates. Is my vote counting? I wish yeah. that more Democrats in New York uh, felt like you and didn't go to the polls and vote. That 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 works for me. I mean, the whole electoral know? thing just uh, galls me well, because, no, quite frankly, I think the guy who get person who gets the most votes should win. Doesn't that seem obvious? Hey, it works that way in Iran. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, you make. You're making the same mistake that a lot of people make. This is not a democracy. This is a republic. We don't elect our leaders. We elect people who appoint our leaders. Or represent Rep us. Yeah. Representatives. Representative it's, democracy. Is it a democracy? No, it's a yeah. republic. Yeah. You know, it's it, a, it's a it, republic it, for which it stands. No, no but is it a I, I agree with Mel. What? That it's a, a, a republic? Yeah. Well, that's what I believe. I mean, the, this the system is it's not one person, one vote. It doesn't work that way. But what happens, the states are supposed to get, with the Electoral College, uh, it, it makes it so that there just isn't two states that control the entire... Yeah, but now, now you're getting into gerrymandering. Well, how is it gerrymandering? you got 50 states... You know, I mean, okay, state, we started I mean, with 13. States are cut up so badly that there's no way in some of these states that a, a, a Republican can win. There's no way a, a Democrat can win in other states. Yeah, but the states weren't cut up that way to uh, to elect the president. It just gives each state uh, more of a voice in Washington. Uh, so... Uh, now, if you took just the people from California and just the people from New York, uh, in the case of Hillary, there was, what, three million more votes. But each state gets what they get, even if the population is, is greater than another state like Rhode Island. You know, uh, so uh, the Electoral College actually gives you a better representation of the entire country, and it doesn't just let two or three states command the entire election. Hmm. Um, you know, uh, and if my candidate lost, I would want it the other way around, too. <laughs> so, but <laughs> Well, hopefully that's going to change. That's what uh, Obama and, um, oh, geez, I forgot his name. He's working with, the, Obama is now working on getting rid of gerryman gerrymandering and having equal voting across the board so that nobody had, you know, one small area. I mean, if you take a look at some of these states, they're cut up in such a bizarre way. It looks like Jack the Ripper went after them, uh, after the map. Would you have to change the Constitution in order to be, ab uh, to be able to eliminate the Electoral College? Yes, I believe you would. Yeah. All right. I may be wrong, but I I, I, I think you're right. Yeah, uh, they, they don't no, change they're that. They're not trying to eliminate the electoral college. They're trying to even up the voting so that it's bipartisan completely instead of totally partisan as it is in some states. Well, uh, Trump in the states that he carried that put him across the threshold only won them by uh, a couple thousand votes. It wasn't uh, that he had such a landslide in any of those areas. There was some counties that yeah, went I for him. He won bigly. Uh, yes, he he did <laughs> bigly. <laughs> but you know, uh, I, for one reason or another, he you know as bad a campaign as he ran because I don't think he wanted to be elected. Uh, he ran a better campaign than Hillary. That I agree with. Yeah. I'm, so, an, FDR, I'm an FDR Democrat, and I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, it, it's just that you, you really sit down and have to say to yourself, Is my, does my vote count? And I just don't know that it does. 
that it ever that it ever did in this particular case. I I just want to feel that if Hillary won by three thousand three million more votes than Trump did, he should be president. She should be president. Uh, I, I, it, it, to me, it was always who got the most votes won. It was that way in high school when we had school class but people this running. This is not the first time. I think it's the fourth time, if I'm correct, that uh, someone won uh, the presidency and lost the popular vote. And uh, the first time it happened, was it Andrew Jackson? Uh, or, uh, you know, back about that well, time? I, uh, I missed that election. Well, uh, uh, the last time it happened was Gore. Alex didn't. The last time it, the last time it happened was Gore. Was Gore. But the first time it so happened. So when you say Gore, how long ago was that? It's happening too often lately. You know, mm -hmm. it's happening too often lately. Uh, it happened with Gore Bush. It happened with uh, Trump, uh, uh, Hillary. Uh, but it also happened with two other. Uh, with uh, I'll look it with up. Clinton, we had an I interesting situation in that. He got the lowest percentage anybody ever got who won for president because you had, what's his name, also running, uh, uh, Perot. Perot. Yeah. I mean, Perot literally handed the presidency to to, uh, uh, to Clinton. Yeah, I helped with that. I voted for Perot. You voted for Perot. <laughs> yeah. Boy, you're always on the wrong side of things, aren't you? Uh, I won this time. <laughs> well, you know what the latest thing is? You want to hear the latest fix that's in? Everybody know who Ajit Pai is? Yeah. 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 FCC. Ajit yeah. Pai is the FCC. Uh, he is the head of the FCC. And uh, they're going to do, they're going to vote on net neutrality. So what they did is they put out a thing and said, we, we, here's the place you can go to post your comments on net neutrality. So the FCC can like see how you feel about things. And then the FCC was very happy to announce that most people who got a hold of them loved net neutrality and loved wanted to get rid of net neutrality. Okay, um, th th that's where net neutrality means that your your ISP, your your the company that carries your service, has to give your signal the same weight as some other some like Netflix. Okay, like here at GabNet, our 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 throughput is on an equal basis with Netflix. All right. But this would create like maybe a super highway and then a super, super highway. And that one would get all the all the goodies. And we'd be sitting here getting low bandwidth and things like that. And they want to do away with net neutrality, which would then make that very difficult. OK, it turns out that they got 22 million comments. That's more comments than they got the original time when they were going about going, having a people post about net neutrality, which only got something like 3.5 million. But what they found out is that there was a lot of phony voting in this thing. There was Rush. A, New York, the New York uh, uh, district attorney. Uh, uh, the district attorney of New York wants to look into it. Eric Schneiderman is his name. I, uh, he said that uh, they've been investigating hundreds of thousands of net neutrality comments left on the FCC website under names and addresses of Americans who didn't write them. And when his office... And they, and, they, and they used the same quote over and over and over again. Their last names end in ski and, uh, uh, and all sorts of other Russian... Well, uh, I don't think this had anything to do with the Russians. When his office requested the commission's cooperation in investigating the fake comments, it offered no substantive response, ignoring multiple requests for records pertaining to the open comment period. Well, that's that's a that's a reason that you should have net neutrality to keep all those trolls off the net. And they're uh, also and they're also ignoring the over two million mail-in, uh, not votes, but uh, mail-in comments that came to the FCC last year uh, for net neutrality. Yeah. Um, uh, if law enforcement can't investigate and where appropriate uh, appropriate prosecute, the door is open for it to happen again and again. And that's why they're mad that they're not being allowed to do anything about it. They, you know, that the FCC doesn't want to cooperate with them on the matter. But that the fix was in, that, that someone was allowed to basically uh, send in more positives than than people running writing in with negatives. Uh 
So it, it you know, there's a there's another case of, of us being denied our due rights and the FCC ignoring it. You know, I think that there's uh, reasons for uh, for dealing with the uh, the net this way. Look at Uber. Uber uh, paid a hacker uh, money to not expose the fact that he hacked and got the information on 56 million people. Uh, oh, and just one thing that uh, to finish off that last thought. Now, I know that you didn't vote in this election, uh, Alex, the John Quincy Adams, but he, he actually lost the uh, popular vote. But you did vote uh, Rutherford B. Hayes, Benjamin Harrison. Yes, I did. I George did. George Bush and Donald Trump. Yeah, that was a straight ticket. I, if... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so there's been five uh, dating back. By to the John way, everybody, do you get this? These are age jokes that he's making. This mm -hmm. old fart named Phil Meyer is making age <laughs> jokes. Hey, I'm still Phil here. actually belongs to the Whig Party, so he. You know, yeah. why don't you make a few about Jeff too while you're at it? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll get some for him too. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I mean, if, because between Jeff and and Mal and myself, you got some alta cockets. Two hundred years. You got of, some alta uh, of Broadcasting here. talent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, and actually, I think I'm the oldest one in the bunch. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know. How old are you, Mal? I'm 73. Oh, well, I'm 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 going to 78 next month. Ugh. Yeah, I'm the youngest. You, 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 no, you, youngest. no, wait a minute. No, no, no. The youngest is probably the, Mark. I would say Mark. How old are oh, you? Yeah. No, no, no. I mean the youngest. Of oh, the Mark's three, a, wait, Mark's asleep the, right now. Look at him. <laughs> He's asleep. I thought his froze screen was frozen. No, it's not. He's asleep. Mark. Oh, Mark! Uh, it's it's late where he is. Why don't you just it's let him? It's late him where walk. I am. It's the same time where first, uh, Jeff is. It's the same time where Mal is. But he's just yeah. Late. Well, you you guys are. Right. Don't oh, need yeah, much there we go. As, we woke, as we, us young guys, we woke do. him up. What we were doing is we were asking people how old they were, and then we looked at you, and you were the only one sleeping. So you must be the oldest. Are you? No, can he's you hear tired. us? Can you hear us, Mark? Yes. Yeah. It, we, uh, we were asking you how old you were because we were trying to say that I'm the oldest person here and we were trying to determine who the youngest is. And I, 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 I huh? I'm, I'm seven. How much are you? 57? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're, but, you're the youngest. Your birthday, one. Mark, is the hmm? same day as mine? 24th. 24th. Right? Yeah. 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 And I, yeah. If we had Brian Can't here tonight, we haven't heard from Brian in a couple of weeks. Yeah, but know. Alex, don't forget, it's it's not the age, it's the miles. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. right. Well, in, in that case, I'm really old. <laughs> Actually, in my case, it's not really the miles, it's the roads I traveled. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but where was I? Oh, yeah. So, um, I think Alex wrote a book about it. We're trying to remember how old you were. Back on net neutrality when I interrupted about your Rutherford, Rutherford uh, B. Hayes support. Yeah, and you, you, yes, you suddenly made an ageist remark uh, referring to my age. And yes, I am what is now a, could easily be referred to as a cocker, you know? Alta cocker. Yeah, yeah. Alta cocker. Yeah, well, I mean, cocker, you, you shorten it, yeah. you make it more lovable. Well, you that know way. what that means. It means old uh, shitter. Old shitter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and that's my favorite thing to do now. <laughs> what, what is it, shit? Well, I, I, what I found is I've grown old, ladies and gentlemen, and this is important for you to know that, and you can take it in one of two ways, uh, is that I said that uh, never overestimate a good fuck and never underestimate a good piss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> or a good shit, either yeah. way. Um, uh, these are things as you get older that become, boy, that was a good shit. Damn it. That was a good one. I haven't had a good one in a week. You well, I, I always consider a good piss one that I got up out of bed before I did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, uh, I, I, you know, I mean, I had prostate problems, so I went and they took some pills, and now I, I peed like a racehorse. You know, I'm fine. You know, I'm cool that way. I've got other problems. Like my yeah, wife, I'm, hey, I'm on LASIK, so I get no no warning at all. He'll just say, "Okay, now." Wait a minute, you're on what? You're on LASIK? 
Lasix. 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 What is Lasix? It's a, it's a uh, it's a water pill basically. Yeah. I'm uh, I have uh, AFib, atrial fibrillation, right, and uh, congestive heart failure. So in order to get rid of the excess fluid, um, they put me on this uh, uh, medication called Lasix which causes me to pee like a racehorse constantly. By the way, for people who are just tuning in, there are times when we do have younger people on this program. <laughs> That's right. Okay. But not tonight. But this is what you get, you know. This is uh, what you get on Fridays after a holiday. Right. Well, you've never had any heart problems, have you, Phil? No. No. No, I haven't had no, any I, heart I problems. Cholesterol, I cholesterol. I, I have got a, high blood pressure. I have a, a slight a non Invasive, non problematic um, uh, aortic stenosis, but that happens to most people. As they get I'm older. sorry, Jeff wins the heart stuff. Oh, well, hit me, you know. <laughs> but I take Lasix also. So really? He's, oh, yeah. a, he's the bionic man for crying out loud. Right. You know. Yeah. He's got uh, what have you, how, many, how many bypasses did you have? Well, I always say I got four uh, aortic valves. And but only one at a time. Only one at a time. So you well, went in. I had, four... I had one triple bypass in two thousand one, but I really? died on the table. So <laughs> really, I, wait a minute, I, wait a minute, you died on the table. I always want to Literally. talk this. Sounds like they a did, comedian. They did a triple. They did a triple bypass. Yeah. They the surgeon finished up. They were they closed me up. The surgeon yeah. left the room. Yeah. And my heart stopped. Really. In seven minutes, they ripped me open to get my heart started again, that I get the surgeon back to repair all the damage they did getting my heart started again. Yeah. And my three-hour bypass was ten and a half hours on the table. Well, wait a minute. Yeah. Let me ask you this then. This is this is good. I, I never talked to no, anybody. I didn't see the light. I didn't, didn't talk nothing. to Jesus. I didn't, <laughs> didn't, didn't nothing. I was total, totally cheated. I thought I mean, you were... They charged me $100,000... And all I did was lie, get to lie there. No, but then you woke up. Did you have any sense that you had died? No. No, it was two days later they, they told me about it. Yeah. However, I really recommend the anesthesiologist because whoever, whatever drugs those were, they were good. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, 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 well, when I get a colonoscopy, they give you uh, uh, what the Michael Jackson drug. A fentanyl. Well, no, they no, the, the what do you call it? The propofil. Propofil. And boy, when that, it, it, all it is is that for a second you get this real great high and then you're out. But you get this. I didn't really, even get that. Yeah. I just, I was out. Really? I was out so fast. I, I mean, no counting backwards, nothing. They said, okay, we're going to start now. Next thing I know, I was in the oh, uh, recovery room. It's It's like they edit like 30 minutes out of your life. Right. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, Mark. Yeah, it's like a smash cut. I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, like one more, one minute I'm on my side. Next thing, I'm like, what? what? Uh, There's no passage of time, no dreaming. Right. It, it, it right. really scared the shit out of me more than anything else. Yeah. No, I was very happy. I was glad. I was. Well, no, you, you, know, you don't want that pipe. You don't want that. The week. I wouldn't care. You don't want that pipe up your ass while you're awake. You know. No. Although well, I, I had that. When I was younger, I had before they had colonoscopies. They had the rigid sigmoidoscopy. Oh, the sigmoid! I had a sigmoidoscopy. The goddamn I, camera was as big as your arm. Yeah, yeah. And you lie there and you're awake and you watch the TV screen as they snake this camera up your ass. You know, though, I the wor worst thing getting a sigmoidoscopy is being the guy sigmoid who invented it and had it named after him. <laughs> you know. What kind of? Oh, I'm. I'm. You know what? You know I knew. I knew this early, back when I knew you. I got to know this guy, and he was a friend of mine. And his father was Dr. Heimlich. Wow. Really? And I was so impressed by that because I said to him, "Your father? Do you know how many lives your father has saved?" And this was still I back saved in the, the life using the Heimlich maneuver. Yeah. How many I people? Had it was a brand this, new. I was, I was in, a, in a restaurant in Florida, and some woman started choking. And I had just seen a thing about the Heimlich maneuver. It was it was a fairly new procedure, and I, I went. I, I saved her life. Wow! I was in a restaurant. He, he was a marvelous man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, about a year ago, 
and I was having oysters. And you know how you take the oyster and <laughs> the raw oyster? Well, I did, and it got stuck in my throat. And they, uh, the woman at the next table was a nurse, and she was going to give me the Heimlich uh, because I was out. I was uh, turning uh, a little bit of color, and you know, I, I. But that was the most relaxing uh, feeling when uh, when uh, I wasn't breathing. Uh, I, I was almost in a in a daydream. And they said it lasted about 30 seconds. Then all of a sudden, I guess I relaxed enough and the oyster went down. But, uh, and they didn't give me the Heimlich. That's too, you know, and I'm glad they didn't because those oysters were expensive. But, you know, <laughs> the, uh, you know the idea is, uh, you know, that was the, the closest I ever came to death. Well, the only, the only, the only near-death experience I ever had was getting married. So, you well, know, you did it four times. I've gone through that three times. And I did so. it four times because it was so that's, much that's fun to be on the more. edge of death. And, yeah. you know, but, uh, uh, it, you know, I mean, death I, would be, I death would be a relief. So, so in other time. words, what you were saying is you died on the table, but you didn't know anything about it. You nope. know, all you three know days is later. It, they told you three days later. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you woke up right after the operation, right? Or were you in? No, in, in, I was out for two days. Oh, really? Oh, I was okay. Out. What did they? Did they? They, keep... didn't, they called. They called my wife. Said they didn't think I'd make it through the night. Really? Would you induce a coma or something? Is that why you were out? I have no idea. Because a lot of times they induce yeah. comas so that you, you know, so that you do remember forget that marriage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, am I going to hear about this on Monday? Uh, yeah, no, no, dear, it wasn't our marriage. Okay, right. it that was, was my other one. It was a couple really? of marriages I back. Care. You know, and the funny part is, I know all except for my first one, who I I don't even know whatever happened to her. Okay, uh, I, I don't. I'm not. I do know what happened to her. I just don't know where I buried her. Uh, but I uh, 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 outside of that one, I still talk to all my ex wives. You know? My second wife and I are still friends. Yeah, and and I talk to my my third ex. Yeah, my my first one I haven't spoken to in twenty years, and I'll be very happy if I don't speak to her for another twenty. Yeah, yeah. I've often said that if she was on fire, I I wouldn't piss on her to put it out. But that's a oh, lie. Oh, I would Jesus. piss on her. I just make sure I didn't put the flames out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Woo. Uh, yeah. Yeah. By the way, in case you don't, if you just tuned in, I notice we have a lot of people listening right now. Uh, Mel uh, Warb is was Carter Stevens, uh, who did uh, was a major sh smut peddler, uh, porno filmmaker. Uh, back in the day, there were there were a few r actual names of directors that you knew in the porno business. His was I'm, one of I'm them. I'm a public pervert retired. Right. Yeah. I think the <laughs> other name I know people knew was uh, Damiano, uh, who did Deep Throat. And uh, he also tried to do really big productions. Uh, there was also Alex Dorenzi. Uh, and you got another one, Mark? No, but I have this strange question I got to ask. There was a puppet movie. I have it here. Damiano. I have it here. I have a copy of it. Let my puppets come. Who made that? Gerard Damiano. Damiano. The guy who did okay. Deep Throat. The there is a guy who did Deep Throat. Okay, there was a rumor about the people that did the puppets, that some of those people worked for Renson. I don't know if that's uh, true what I heard. I, what I heard was know. Bill Baird. Those are Baird's? Wow. I think. If you look at them, they look like Baird that sounds, puppets. That sounds more in the time period, Baird yeah. rather than Henson. Hanson was soft. Were soft. Were soft hand puppets, basically. Yeah. Uh, whereas uh, Baird's were the string puppets, Mary which were, was used right. the marionettes, which were used in this picture. You know. Uh, mm -hmm. Listen, you had people. What's his name? Who did Nightmare on Elm Street? Um, uh, Wes Craven. Wes Craven. Wes Craven. And also Sonnefeld was working in porn. Yes, Barry. I Barry supposedly. I had yeah. Barry directed a film for. A uh, gentleman we call, used to call Mr. Mustard because he had like 50 kinds of mustard in his refrigerator. Yeah, but, uh, but what? But Barry did direct, he used to direct like five films at a time. They'd shoot five scenes in the same 
location and cut it into five different movies. And I acted in a couple for Barry. And Barry Sonnenfeld? Yes. Wow. And then, of course, there was Wes Craven. I, I know worked on uh, uh, the, the Screw Magazine movie, one of them. Um, there were two of them. Uh, yeah, it happened in Hollywood. Uh, and and he was uh, he he was working porn for a while as a cameraman and everything else, yeah. you know. Uh, so there were there were people that came out of porn. They don't didn't want to admit it later on, but yeah, I think Craven never denied it. You know, Craven was pretty open about it. And with a name like Craven, you'd have to be in porn. Uh, you know. You know, I I I like mustard. I I I go into a store and I look at the displays of mustard just to see which ones I can buy that I hadn't bought before. I don't have fifty, but you know, and Dijon mustard only has five calories. This is funny. So it yeah. it's uh, I could see how a guy could beat a mustard. We're, we're man. talking to one of the most. Now, now I understand why he votes for Trump. I'm I'm strictly a ketchup man. <laughs> we're talking to one of the most noted uh, uh, of the of the halcyon days of porn pornographers and you're bringing up mustard uh you know oh that's all i got left (laughs) wouldn't mayonnaise be more appropriate i don't know you're going (laughs) it's like i used to say i fake my orgasms i use mayonnaise uh i'll have to soon as soon as they remove the prostate yeah when are they doing that uh january january oh really you're gonna you're gonna gonna get the whole thing taken out there yeah the little yeah. evil monster I got to go to dallas and then uh, come back and i they rip me apart isn't it terrible that something that gives you so much pleasure throughout your life suddenly becomes your enemy yeah you know um yeah. but uh, and you've got another you've got another uh opinions right yeah the the other people wanted to give me a lobotomy but you know yeah. uh, i i settled for the prostate removal yeah yeah <laughs> But it hasn't spread, and it's very slow growing, uh, and so on. Yes, that's yeah. But it's there. Yeah, they can't just do a terp on it and just take out part of it, or just. Uh, it, it's too big. It's, uh, it's 135 milliliters, and it's got to be under 60 to do a terp. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, so yeah. you know, if if you just listen, turn into, see, tuned into the show, I swear to you, have... we get younger people calling it from time to time. You know, uh, I'm I'm not uh, not that well endowed, but I do have a big prostate. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's what you say. Um, uh, did you did you? Uh, a lot of people would say, Mel, and and I know the answer to this question because I had to deal with it myself. Is that when you were photographing people in your case having sex? I was just photographing people naked for the most part. Uh, and people said, well, how can you be that close to a naked woman and not be getting a heart on and so on and so forth? And I said, I don't know. I was concentrating on the shot I was getting. Was that the same way with you? I mean, did you ever get oh, horny? Absolutely. You're concentrating on the framing. You're concentrating on the focus. You're concentrating on not dropping the camera. And if you've got a good shot, you're not getting a boner, but you are going, ooh, that's good. Ooh, exactly. that looks yeah. great. You know. Yeah, I know the feeling. And you're trying to direct and not have them lose their boner yeah you know i've been shooting some of those shows at the uc theater uh and uh what what happens is you know they said to me well how did you like the music on such and such a show i said i didn't hear any of it first of all i had an earplugs in and and i was just concentrating on the shots yeah you know uh, you know I, I had no idea i said as long as they're animated i i like them <laughs> yeah. yeah what's the worst thing ever happened on the set of a porn film for you uh, mal <laughs> we had a lovely little girl. We don't mean little. You don't husband. mean. You, let's clear this up. You don't mean her little. Husband. Little girl. A woman. She was a woman, but she was like eighteen, very small, petite, what was very her, cute. What, what was her name? Girl. She had a husband. She would only work with her husband, and he had a microphallus. <laughs> be polite. So it was it was a challenge to photograph it. Well, it couldn't it in the middle of the scene, and suddenly there was an odor in the room Ooh. that almost knocked us all out, emanating from the nether region of this lovely little girl. Yeah, I mean, 
enough to really knock you. Did you blame the caterer? No, I I had that I had that happen one time with a model I was shooting, um, and I, um, you know, it's a funny story. I I I asked a um, obstetrician or a gynecologist, uh, what's the worst part about being a gynecologist, and he said the smell. And I was about ready to say, you mean that? He says, no. He says, I'm working, you know, and they're, they've got their legs in the stirrups, and I'm looking at the vagina, and their feet are smelling terrible. They have terrible, women have, they don't know it because you never put your nose down there, but the feet are terrible. The vagina is no problem. The feet were what stunk. Well, this girl's feet were fine. <laughs> okay. Did she have something wrong with her? Was she? Oh, uh, we don't know. We didn't know. Nobody, nobody had the guts to ask her. Yeah. We just sort of slid, slid through that scene very quickly. And, and, and when you watch the rushes on this, did you vomit? <laughs> I mean, did you have a gag reflex? I don't remember, but I probably gagged. Boy, so you see, so when I said, "Tell me the worst thing ever happened on a set," he immediately had a story. He immediately had one. Never forget that girl as long yeah. as I live. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Um, and so how many mustards do you no, have? It's, it's so how many? Yeah, how many? Off, how many? It's enough to put you off steak for a week. <laughs> he just asked, "How many mustards do you have?" <laughs> yeah. Me? Yeah. No, so I'm a ketchup man. Ketchup yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, uh, I, I. Do I like ketchup? I'm not crazy about ketchup. I eat French fries. Sure. I I eat, folks, French fries dry. I don't. You know, I, the English use vinegar, uh, malt. Oh vinegar. yeah, malt vinegar. vinegar. Nice. No, that's that's very European. That's yeah. fish and chips. All over Europe, that's the way you get fries. But that's a good way to do it. But I yeah. I don't like my fries dipped in anything. But for basically, you know, I mean, Marjorie will just like you know pour ketchup all over them. But I I just like them dry. I think they taste great dry. If they're done right, I like them salted, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what it comes down to, folks. You know, uh, no longer are we having a discussion with Mal about, hey, who did you who did you <laughs> fuck last week? Now we have a, a discussion about so what mustards, uh, what condiments do you do you enjoy? Okay. Uh, in, in Australia, they use a lot of vinegar. Yeah. On their on their chips. What are they called? I think they call it chips. Yeah. What's that? What's that Australian crap you ate on the air a couple of years ago? Oh, uh, uh, Vegemite. Vegemite. When I was, oh, yeah. what? I, I was in the crap. Airport, uh, in Orlando a couple of weeks ago, and there was these Australians sitting next to me, and they uh, wanted to borrow the mustard. And I said, "What? Well, isn't there any Vegemite on your table?" <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've had Vegemite, and it, have you ever had it, Mark? Have you ever tried Vegemite? Yeah. How do we dis describe it? it? It tastes like axle grease, doesn't it? It's definitely an acquired taste that you have to grow up with. Awful. But these Aussies love it, they said. Well, yeah, I know. Uh, and I think, it, it. you know, it's like I talked about how my mother used to make tripe, so I love tripe. Yeah. Right? You, 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 you go to your comfort foods. My mother, we were talking about it the other night, used to make borscht. And I don't like beets, but I loved borscht. You know, I love borscht. Clear borscht, not with the beets in it, but just the, the cold borscht. With a yeah. hot potato in it and some sour cream on top. Well, they, sometimes they shred the beets and they put it in the borscht. Well, no, but I said but I, without the shredded beets in the borscht. Just the clear borscht broth. Boy, I'm glad I got that out. <laughs> almost. Uh, <laughs> that almost. was an Elmer Fudd moment. Yeah. But anyway, I, I just uh, you know I think it's uh, I think it's uh, uh, wonderful that uh, that we can we can have uh, a pornographer on and wind up our discussions talking about condiments i think that 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 uh, ends the week very very nicely oh, condiments i thought you said condoms <laughs> hey <laughs> thanks thanks to phil meyer ladies and gentlemen for joining us and jeff stein and mark thorner thank you for calling and the legendary carter stevens mal warb whatever you want to call him 
Call us again, Mal, will you? It's great oh, having definitely you. definitely will, now that I have a camera that works. Yeah. It's yeah. a microphone. I wrote I him, I wrote I him and that. he said, my camera doesn't work. Matters. And then he wrote me back and he said, guess what? I got my camera working. Everybody, wave goodbye so they can say goodbye to you. It was a small panel tonight, but, you know, okay. it's a Thanksgiving weekend. Have a good rest of the weekend, everybody. Bye. Okay. That's our panel, our citizens panel, ladies and gentlemen. Hope we had fun tonight. And, uh, you know, uh, that that's as it should be, having fun. Uh, I'll see you again. Uh, let's see here. Well, well, next is 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 uh, Jack Bishop. Amy isn't with him because she's on vacation somewhere, uh, where they don't have they don't have the internet. And then uh, then at uh, uh, midnight, uh, the connections. Uh, that's it for me. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again um, Tuesday, same time, same station in life. And as always, if you see her. Tell her I love her. Okay? Bye, everybody.